Hi, my name is Joel Goldstein with Mr. Checkout, and the most frequently asked question that I receive is how to develop a path to market for a new product. When you're looking at a newer product, the biggest thing to remember is who is your customer, where are they located, and how are they looking to find your product. For example, one of our best products was a pickle line, and their best sales were in independent hardware stores. So if you trace that back, their best customer was a 40 to 60 year old you know, male, and that's who frequented those stores. So working backwards from who your customer is to where they're looking for your product is the best place to get started. The second way to really kind of grab somebody's attention is to maximize and hone in your in-store education component. What that means is when somebody's walking in a store and not specifically looking for the product, how do you grab their attention? How do you quickly tell them what the product is, how it operates, and why they should buy it over somebody else's? And how do you interrupt their flow from their traditional shopping path to purchase and pick up your product? So the biggest things that we've seen work are, number one, shelf talkers. You know, little tabs that stick out from the shelves that talk about your product or say, take a look at this new brand. Second, you might want to interrupt the path that they're walking on. So if you have a dump bin, which is really just a barrel in, on the ground and has your product piled in it, that is a quick way to get the customer's attention because they're probably going to have to move their shopping cart around it. And if you're looking for flexibility, nothing beats a clip strip. One of those little hang tags that you can pull right off the shelf and there's a little card area right above that where you can put education about the product. Usually the best things for these are impulse items, you know, something under $10 where you can advertise the price as the competitive advantage and say, grab this, it'll make your day a little bit easier. The most frequently occurring issue that I get when I'm speaking to a supplier that's coming to us from Amazon or Shopify is that they haven't accounted for the margin that it requires to be on the shelf in retail stores. Knowing that ahead of time will allow you to prepare for what may occur in the future. You gotta prepare for your success if you're gonna be successful. So when you're looking at in-store retail, typically retailers want between 30 to 50%, usually higher, uh, around 50%. So the grocery stores, if you have a grocery product, it's typically gonna be between 25 to 30%. If you have a novelty product or something in line, it might be closer to that 50 to 55% margin requirement. Knowing that ahead of time will allow you to prepare to make your margins available and set your sales price in accordance to what retail will truly cost. The second pitfall that we often see with logistics and distribution is that a lot of people don't account for the margin and the discrepancy between distributors. On one side, there's a large wholesale distributor and they take your product, they put it in a warehouse, However, you have to figure out how to get it into the store and merchandised on the shelves, which usually means hiring a merchandising company to do that and to verify that it's placed in the right spot and shelved properly. Second is a DSD distributor, a smaller jobber typically that purchases the product from you, usually a smaller quantity, but they purchase the product from you, they sell it into the store, they merchandise it in the store, and they make sure that it's displayed properly. They take a higher margin. The wholesale distributors take a lower margin. However, you're gonna to have to pay chargebacks, you're gonna to have to pay warehousing fees, and a merchandising company on top of that for the larger distributor. So they usually even out in the end. The last question that I usually receive is, when should they go big and who should they work with? It's often an issue when you go big too soon because the larger retailers, they may put a huge purchase order in. However, if the product doesn't sell out of the store, you may have to buy that product back and then pay to ship it back to you. And you'll get killed in the process. We've seen a lot of small businesses go out of business when they go too big too soon. Second is, should you hire a professional sales rep or an experienced sales broker? That's a double-edged sword, so you're giving up a lot of control. However, you might be accessing their connections and their experience. We've had a lot of experience with uh, a rep research group uh, that have found really experienced reps 
and we always suggest going through an experienced rep research group to find those true connections that have experience and will be able to provide you that adequate path to market that'll get your product on the shelf at the end of the day. I hope those tips helped. We and Mr. Checkout are a network of about 900 boots on the ground DSD distributors and about 250 cash and carries across the country that service roughly 150 to 200,000 independent retailers. If you're looking to have your product placed on independent retailer shelves, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you.